there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, on the previous video, uh, we measured valve spring free length. That's basically how long the spring is when it's not in the head. And uh, over time, they shrink. They get shorter because they get compressed. Now, the next step to calculate how much force this spring is applying to the valve to keep it closed in the head. Because don't forget it's the valve spring that's responsible for closing the valve. And it's the, valve, it's the camshaft lobe that's responsible for opening the valve. Two totally different components. Now, the weaker this spring gets over time, the less pressure it can apply to the seat uh, the sealing surface between the valve and the valve seat that's in the head. So, when we're rebuilding an engine, we need to check to make sure that these springs are still providing sufficient closing force to keep these valves sealed against the head. And to do that, we have to basically do a calculation, do a couple of measurements, and then do a calculation to find out what the length of this spring is when it's installed in the head because when you actually you know, use your valve spring compressor you're compressing the spring down and you're putting the collets in and then you release the valve spring compressor and this doesn't sit there rattling around this is quite tight and it is already partly compressed and we need to find out what that length of spring is when it's partly compressed in the head when it's installed so then we can mimic that on a special machine that I've just stolen from Unitech for the day uh, and that will tell us basically exactly how much force this spring is able to apply to the valve keeping it in the head in the closed position how, and basically how quickly it can close that valve as well because the weaker these get the sooner you get valve belts so high performance engines have really really strong valve springs but there is a limit and that's why we're going towards uh, air operated valves and um, solenoid valves on the new engines. Okay, so we're going to head over to the head, which is just here on the bench, and I'm going to show you the two measurements that you have to take, and then we'll do a calculation and we'll work out how long this spring is when it's fitted into the head. Okay, so the first job is to grab a valve. Now this is one of the exhaust valves, and no, I haven't cleaned it up yet, but they're going to get replaced anyway. And you grab an exhaust valve and we stick it in one of the exhaust, the respective um, exhaust port all the way through and then grab a rag and put the rag essentially um, over the combustion chamber there look and then drop the head down on the bench. Now that rag all it's going to do is make sure that valve stays all the way up against its seat and now we can take a measurement. Okay so now you can see the valve exhaust valve is up through the uh, the valve stem so the valve guide and this is the top of the valve here and that's been pushed up now we've got to measure from the top of here down to where the valve spring sits down here look okay so you get your trusty vernier calipers and all we need to do is stick the pointy stick out the end and then very carefully Put the pointy stick where the bottom of the valve spring sits and then bring that down. Oh no, the camera's in the way. There you go. Bring that down until it makes contact with the top of the valve, top of the valve stem. Now, it's very important that you have the verniers uh, in line and parallel to the valve stem, otherwise, you're not going to get a very accurate reading. And because my camera's in the way, Sorry camera, you're going to get moved a bit. There we go. Okay, so let's see what we've got. 37.41 millimetres. Now, we're not finished yet. There's another, another measurement to take. Okay, so for that one we got 37.41 millimetres. But that's just one of the measurements. We need to take another one. So we need the valve back out again. And the reason why we need to take another measurement is the top of the spring does not sit right on the top of the valve. No, no, no. There's a little washer. This thing, okay. Different names for that. 
Okay, and that sits over there like that. And the valve spring, hang on, let's do this properly. The valve spring sits underneath there. Okay, and then we have the two collets that go in and lock that into place. We have to do a calculation which basically tells us what the distance is from where the spring sits on that plate there to the top of the valve. And we can deduct that from the first measurement. And that will give us the available space the valve spring itself sits in. Okay, so all I've done is put the two collets in and pulled it really tight so it's all the way up. And now, all we have to do is measure from the top of there to that lip there. Now, the easiest way I find of doing that, because we can't really use a vernier, because you can't, well, you know, you, you can't really get in because it's, it's all the way over there, is I usually sit the valve vertically on the back of the vise, and then again use my little pointy stick down to touch the top of the vise, and that will give me a measurement. Okay, it's pretty accurate. It's not NASA stuff, but it's pretty good. Okay, so I'll read you the camera, and you can see how it's done. Right, so you've got your valve, and so we've fitted the top with the collets, and the spring, wherever the spring's gone, there we are, look, sits basically on that lip just there. So if you get your valve, and I've put an engineer's square on the workbench because things are very distorted on camera. And basically, this is horizontal and this is vertical and there's your 90 degrees. Now, I'm just using the engineer's square as a guide to help me keeping the valve in the vertical plane. Because it needs to be dead vertical. Because if you move it around a bit, it's going to massively change the measurement that you get. But let's face it. This isn't NASA. Okay, so you get your verniers. Just extend the little pointy stick, and obviously don't forget to zeroize it. And then put your vernier next to it, making sure your valve's vertical. And then just run that down until it touches the surface of where the, val of where the valve spring sits. And let's see what we've got. Okay, well, we've got a reading of 3.16 millimeters. Okay. Let's do some sums. Hockley dockley. Okay, so the first measurement we took, which was with the valve installed into the head from the, where's the valve gone? Jeez, okay. There we go. From the valve top, top of the stem, down to where the, the base of the valve spring fits. And we got 37.41 millimeters. And then we measured the, uh, the distance that basically is um, from the top of the valve here down to where the top of the spring sits. And that was 3.16 millimetres. So if we deduct 3.16 millimetres from the first measurement, we get 34.25 millimetres. So that tells us that when this spring's installed, it's compressed to a length of 34 0.25 millimeters. Now on a previous video I showed you how to measure the free length of the spring but from memory it was just over 40 mil so this spring is essentially being compressed by about six millimeters when it's installed and that affects how much force it has pulling that valve uh, the valve closed and giving it a sealing effect and we can actually adjust this if this is a fraction down we can put shims on the base of the spring so that when it's installed, it's actually squashed a little bit more. But there are a limit to how many, or how, the thickness of those shims that you can add, because of course what you might find is the spring's gonna, it's gonna bottom out, it's gonna become coil bound, they call that, when the spring is completely compressed and all these little coils make contact, and of course it won't compress anymore. And that can be a very serious condition, and it can cause damage to the engine, it can bend uh, rockers and it can damage lobes and stuff and basically you get a mechanical lock something has to give and it'll break so I told you to do a short video that's how to measure or work out calculate the installed height of a particular valve spring now don't forget if you've got shims in there and you're going to be putting the shims back in again then when you do that uh, the first measurement you need to have the shims 
in situ or measure the, sim the shims separately and then deduct the thickness of those shims from that first measurement because that's obviously the shims are going to squash the spring slightly more. Okay, so that's how you work out installed height of a valve spring. I hope you found that short video helpful. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, then do leave them down the bottom and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Um, if you'd like to subscribe, then do so, but don't forget to go onto the little gear icon and so also select receive all notifications, otherwise you won't get notified when new videos hit the channel. Okay crew, thanks for watching, cheers, over and out.